15. Does unconsciousness count as a short rest? You open your eyes. Lying in a pool of blood before you is a scroll tube. Is it your own blood? You would recognize the designs anywhere. Waterproof, fire resistant, acid neutral, safe for protecting most parchments and vellums. As you reach for it, a hand intercedes and pulls you up. You grope the hard, familiar edge of a book cover with your other hand and stuff the tome under your arm as you groggily find your feet. An arrow whizzes past your head. You discern a yelp from the pandemonium in the tavern around you. Your head pounds with pain. You reach up to feel a bump the size of your fist shrink back into your head. You can feel it moving under your skin, sliding down the inside of your face. It feels like a large tear. Your eyes find the calm ocean of peace looking back at you. They smile. You owe me, says the androgynous person. You cough. <coughs> you cough out a dried purple clot of blood, all that remains of the wound that had knocked you out. You blink your eyes and feel surprisingly good, as if you've awoken from an impromptu but much-needed nap. The blood on the ground is not mine after all. You note the white tube lying within it. There's something important about that scroll tube. A small red creature moving so quickly you question its existence swoops down toward the scroll. The twang of a bow sounds behind you. An arrow catches the creature in the hip and spins her away into the room, a trail of smoke flying after. Let's see. The twang of a bow sounds behind you. You wince in anticipation, but the arrow catches the little red creature in the hip and spins it away into the room, a trail of smoke tailing after. The hunched bowman who loosed the shot smiles as you look at him, then points his bow at you. At his feet lies the unconscious form of the city wizard whom you so ostentatiously stole from. The next arrow is intended for you. You duck and hear a cry behind you. Even when he misses, he hits. Perhaps you and Chagall have chosen the wrong side in this fight. You spy your friend Chagall the Barbarian and the skeleton, Skeletone, trading blows on the bar. Her clawed skeleton hands rake his arm as his maul lands on the bar with a cracking smash. Get off my bar, half-dog, bellows Korak, the half-orc. Things are not going well. There is blood. My rug is a mess. Furniture has been broken, and now the bar is cracked. She can hold back no longer. Korak swings for Chagall's leg with the shining blade of her axe. The blow will probably take the limb off. Lyre's fingers dart through a contramelody within the rhythm of her song. It is amusing, comical, and to Korak the half-orc, it is irresistibly hilarious. She starts to chuckle, and that sends the swing past Chagall and into the bar. Now I've cut my own bar. <laughs> it was hilarious. The laughter burst out of her like a dyke during the rainy season. She leaves her axe protruding from the bar and grabs her sides. Her knees hit the stone flagging with a thud. Something about music could be so funny sometimes. Chagall nods his thanks to the elven bard. Good song, elf. Lyre winks back. She isn't an elf. Skeleton, the skeleton, 
uses the shift in the barbarian's focus to leap down from the bar. Naros watches as Skeleton sweeps the scroll tube off the ground with a bone arm, a spray of blood fanning into the air, and charges into the stools in front of the door. In a few moments, she'll be gone. Ignoring the skeleton, the hunched ranger pokes his bow around a ceiling support and aims again at Gnarls. A lasso flies past Gnarls' head toward the skeleton. The bow draws back. Gnarls spreads his fingers. If he aims correctly, he'll catch more than one. It is fog or fire, and he's gotten tired of fog. As Gnarls chants the words of power, the indoor opens. <laughs>